As trade tensions between the U.S. and China ramp up, the central banks of India, New Zealand, and Thailand moved to slash interest rates overnight. Joining me with more is BNN Bloomberg's Andy Bell. Andy, let's talk about this. Uh, we're hearing a lot of interest rate cuts around yeah. the world. What does this ultimately mean? It means that central banks in those countries are worried about slowing economies. We've got more and more central banks going towards zero or even negative interest wow. rates. When the world economy slows down, it's bad for Canada because we have such an open economy. I mean, take mustard seed. Saskatchewan <laughs> turns out thousands, yeah. probably millions of tons of the stuff. We can't eat it all ourselves, so we supply the world with mustard seed, oil, lumber products. Uh, so Canada needs to trade. A slowing global economy is bad news. A slowing global economy, a trade war looming between the U.S. and China. Yeah. Is Canada caught in the crossfire? Completely, yes. Yeah. It's, it's monkey in the middle. And, I mean, this trade war is escalating. To, uh, we haven't seen anything possibly since the 30s. The, Mr. Trump's latest tariffs will push up the price of clothing from China, cell phones. The American consumer is going to feel this as they go for their holiday shopping. OK, but how does that then affect Canadians? What, what, what's, that, what's that loop? The loop is that, well, we're obviously an appendage in many ways to the U.S. economy. So if, if it slows down, we slow down. But also, oil has been dropping. We've got world oil prices near two-month lows. Any drop in the oil price is bad for the Canadian economy. Now, our dollar has held up fairly well uh, at around 75 cents U.S. But the one thing is baffling economists. With a relatively low dollar, the big cuts in taxing uh, on investments by the federal government why has there not been an investment boom in Canada? It hasn't materialized. It really looks like Canadian companies are scared right now. So, okay, so what can the federal government do to, to help alleviate those fears? Is there anything, I mean, I, I, I'm sure we're going to feel some impact, but is there anything that the Canadian government can do to mitigate that impact? They could cut taxes again, um, but of course the election is not far off. They formally don't have a budget, so they've run out of time for that. And Mr. Trudeau would be vulnerable to attacks from the Conservatives. Oh, you're making the deficit go even even bigger. To some extent, Canada is like a boat right now on this global storm, just being lifted up and down. So uh, besides these stories, what else are you following? Well, gold. Um, gold. Gold, is, uh, gold is not an important commodity in world terms, but it has this psychological mm. fascination. And gold has now topped $1,500 US for the first time since 2013. Wow. Of course, one problem is, I know a lot of people are probably watching, just fingering their rings, thinking, maybe I'll melt this thing down. <laughs> That's one problem for gold. Um, once it gets high enough, people start bringing in gold objects uh, oh, and really? selling them so new supply comes on the market. But that, that's a sign of fear around the world when you see gold going to six-year highs. All right, so gold and a trade war uh, and lower interest rates. Uh, we will be following you at BNN in Bloomberg as you follow those stories. I know. It's life during wartime, though, right now. We've never seen trade conflict like this. Wow. It's actually a little bit like Britain and Germany before the First World War. I'm not saying it's going to turn into a war, <laughs> but Germany was supplanting Britain yes. as the world's industrial leader, and China's doing that to America. Very, very interesting parallels. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks we appreciate the insight. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.